take the ownership of your own things. Don't get excuses. Why did you think management was a good path then? What triggers me, it's more the problem solver mentality than managing. How do you balance being so busy at work and being a superstar? My mother is like a conservative one, so she's a super hard woman. If you were to interview me, what qualities do you look for? Did you think that you're a natural leader? Hello everyone, I'm Ban, and together with Abdullah, my co-host and colleague at Microsoft, would like to welcome you to the very first episode of our podcast, Women in Big Tech. In here, we will be talking to the strongest, most influential women in our ever-growing tech industry. We will be giving you the opportunity to tap into their incredible journeys, showing you what it's really like to be a super successful woman uh, working in tech giants like Microsoft or Apple. We chose big tech companies because first of all, they are super interesting. And second of all, they're such competitive environments. And it's honestly very exciting to be able to interview the people behind the titles and get to really know them. Abdullah will go ahead right now and introduce our first guest ever and kick kickstart our first interview. So today we have a very, very special guest. She is a director of support engineering at Microsoft based out of Lisbon, Portugal, and has been in Microsoft for six years. She studied mathematics and operational research at university, then worked in Siemens for about two years, and then joined a couple of different companies working mainly in the customer services area before joining Microsoft six years ago as a support engineering manager, and then got promoted to a director, which is basically a manager of managers. She is one of the most inspiring women we have ever worked with and is an exceptional leader. Hopefully, we'll get to touch on some of her leadership principles later in this um, episode. So please help me welcome Claudia Carvalho. Claudia, thank you so much for being here. It is such an honor to have you on this show and as the first guest here. So thanks a lot for being here. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Ben and Abdullah. This is really a pleasure to be and an honor to, to kick off this uh, great project. I hope that um, this will not only inspire us, but will help others to see that uh, how much is on us to, to be successful, but also to be fulfilled in the sense of achieving our own goals, which are not necessarily the same for all of us. So, and uh, if that helps, I'm super pleased and happy to contribute as much as possible. We appreciate, we appreciate that uh, greatly. You know, we, we're very excited to have you here and we have a lot of interesting topics to, to discuss. But I think before we jump into these interesting topics, I would like to maybe take a step back and have you walk us through your, you know, very early career journey, you know, and maybe shed some light on some crucial decisions you have made that, that led to where you are today. So could you maybe share with us some of your um, early journey? Uh, yes, I, I can start and share a bit. And, and, and it's curious because... Uh, Last week, someone has, has made me a similar question in a different context, and I was reflecting, and I realized that, in fact, I, I have already more than 22 years of experience, and I noticed that there are some, some things that happen that probably has a lot to be with myself, my, my profile, and the way I'm, I'm seeing life. And uh, one of the things is, um, I always was looking for something that I was passionate about. So, I, and I think that resonates a lot with my education, the way I was raised and my parents, I, I must thank you every day for that because they always taught me, myself, my brother, to look ahead of what we want and to, 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 to not to be confident, but to trust and to rely on our own capabilities and the things that we can develop. And I think that was really important to make sure that in some key moments, I was not taking the risk, but I was taking the decisions that I thought at that moment were the best for me. And so this allows me to fulfill a journey that with all the challenges and all the problems that I had like anyone else, I had the chance to, to define the path that was meaning, meaningful for me not for Ben, not for you, not for my parents, but for me. And that makes me more, uh, um, I enjoy, I think I have the chance to enjoy more 
than many people that sometimes just took decisions because they think that it's the what the others think is the best. And I think I have that lucky to make decisions that were really important for me, for Claudia, for me as a human being. And having said this, the first thing was, I'm super passionate and as you mentioned about my education, about maths and uh, I, I was really looking ahead of science, physics, maths, uh, research, that was really something amazing. But at the same time, I was passionate also about arts. Uh, and I, I was always mixed feelings. I love to paint, to do a lot of things regarding that. And at some point in time, I need to take a decision. Till I, I went to, the, to college, I was able to manage both. So I can have my, my school and on a, as a hobby, I can invest a lot of time uh, on hearts. But then there was a time that I need to decide. So what will be the education that I was following? And I was really, well, mixed feelings, uh, 17 years old. So a lot of energy, youth and art seemed like, wow, it's amazing. And my parents, without saying no, they said, you should think well. And, and now that I'm a mother, I resonate a lot with that kind of thoughts. Uh, that is, uh, you, should, you should think what you want for you. And when you really like two things, they complement each other. It's hard to decide what. And they said, think that what you need to learn so you can be independent and you can choose your own life and take the other as something that you can invest as a hobby, as something that you learn, you practice, but it won't be your core role. And uh, that was hard, but that I think I had the chance to Instead of just saying, well, maybe what they are telling me is look for uh, a degree in engineering uh, management, something that was the standard one. I was looking what the people that uh, have taken the, 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 the degrees that I was looking for, what they were doing. And so I remember to went to some researchers uh, and, and look what mathematicians, physicians, physicians and everybody in that uh, space to understand what was their daily life. And I went there and let me say that was a wow moment. Why? Not because it wasn't amazing. Yes, it was really amazing. But those profiles, those people, the way they were living their daily life was nothing to do with me. They were a lot of more isolated, more quiet, everything in the right place not a lot of noise, not a lot of people because they need to be focused, as we can imagine, to, 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 to get deep knowledge and to look ahead of things. And I remember I went there with a friend and I said, this is not for me. After a week, I will be, I will be shouting because I need people. I need to, to, to do things with people. I need to connect. And this is, this is myself. This is something that it's, we need to know ourselves and what makes us happy as well. We need not to be someone else. <laughs> and I think that is something that made me decide to go definitely to, to maths, but uh, uh, more uh, uh, an applied area that is operation research. And definitely that was a very good choice. Why? Because I also found people that I, I felt a lot of empathy. We have similar approach. We, have, we like to do similar things even in terms of practice and everything. So that decision was made a huge difference probably on what I'm doing today. And so when I went to Siemens, that was the first, uh, I would say the first internship after the school. Uh, and uh, it was something that makes sense. It was a follow-up. It was a segue from my, my, my degree. And um, ever since, I haven't changed so many times of uh, company-wise, but whenever I felt that what I was doing was not make me happy and wake up with a lot of energy, that was like a, a bell. So it's like, hey, Claudia, you need to think ahead of, is this the place that you want to be? Is this something that you want to look for? Nothing is perfect and I'm not expecting and... Uh, that every single minute in any company, even in the best one that is Microsoft, and I'm super happy to be here, you will be happy every single day and you will enjoy every single activity. That is not possible. 
However, the balance that each of us needs to get from what we are doing needs to be positive. I need to be happy every single day. I need to have, I cannot have day after up after uh, things that completely draw my energy and my ability to feel, I would say, uh, fulfilled and that I'm achieving something and I'm learning and I'm growing as a person. And so that I think was the main key thing is whenever there's something that constantly was, was like on my backhand, just tinkling and, and making me, is this something you want to keep doing? Whenever it was needed, I was able to take a decision. And, and, and to take the decision, sometimes it was hard. Sometimes when I moved companies, uh, the role was not exactly what I thought it would be, the, I would say, capable for. I, I didn't have the, all the skill sets. But again, a bit to take a decision that you are comfortable with and to understand that there's always a gap that you need to fulfill. And that is your inner energy and willing to learn and to grow that will help uh, covering that gap. It's something that you become, and after a practice, you become more comfortable. It's like, yes, you know that you need to go through the ignorance piece, the lack of knowledge, you need to build that, you need to build the, the connections, the relationship, your trust advisors, the people that you will rely, you ask for help. And whenever you change environment, you need to build that. It takes time, it's not one click, no. But uh, as soon as you understand that that is part of the journey, you start enjoying it. And I think that's, that is a good moment when you, don't, you know that you, you don't know everything, you don't know in advance, you don't know the people, but you will enjoy getting into those all pieces together. And so definitely to do good decisions and to feel comfortable and peaceful with the decisions that we made, even when sometimes they are not the best and we need to revert them. This is something that I think that people should look for because mm -hmm. I think help us a lot, at least help me so far. Right, right. You, you've mentioned a couple of very important uh, points in my opinion. So the, the first one being that um, you kind of have to make your own decisions and not really live up to the expectations of other people. So the career path you choose is going to be based based on you. And I think this is such a such a crucial topic because a lot of us want to live up to the expectations of others because others think that we fit in this specific role. So we mm -hmm. it's almost like we don't want to disappoint these people and yeah. you know we want to live up to their expectations. And I think mm -hmm. what you mentioned is, is super important. And another thing that I liked is um, the fact that you actually you know try to see if you know research is the thing for you, but when you actually experience that, you find out that it's not for you and you wanted something more applied. So that brings me to the topic of, uh, you know, in order to know what you like and what you don't like, you actually have to experiment. And I think it's okay if you're early in your career to not know what you want. I'm going to mm -hmm. experiment. So I, I'm just saying that I really, those two points really resonate with me. And I think it's important to, to shed some light um, on them. But, but before, before, we, um, before we talk a bit more about that, but could you tell us what made you get into management, first of all? So why management and why did you think management was a good path um, for you? Well, uh, I think that was a learning, why I'm saying this. Um, definitely in terms of education, management was not something that I was willing to because I really, what triggers me, it's more the problem solver mentality than managing, yeah. at least on an early stage. So I was looking uh, for understanding uh, patterns, understanding uh, situations, what was missing. So it, my, my mindset by default, it's not managing, it's looking for the reason. So more, more, more specific. However, we, life teaches a lot of things. And one of the things that um, during my early stage in, in uh, I would say, I can talk about career, but I can, I would say life because this is something, it's, it's a package, it came all together. So um, when, when we are looking at uh, uh, doing things, most of the times there's no perfect solution. There's not the optimum solution. There's, you are always 
balancing what you can get from what you need to invest to get it. And at the end, this is management. Managing is, is what you can do with the resources that you have available. Can be human, can be uh, money, can be other tools. It's the, the skill set of a manager baseline is the ability to feel comfortable, not to have the right solution and to manage accordingly to what you have. You can, you can use this in terms of a chef uh, in the kitchen, right? You do a recipe with the ingredients that you have. And most of the times you don't have all the ingredients unless you buy in anticipation. But the, the, the great chefs, they have a very good management skill in a different context, but they are able to do something amazing with what they have. I would say moving again to management, that was something that when I start and I and very early I, I work in consultancy and most of the time as a consultant and in a project, you have a lot of challenges in, in, uh, with the customers and with the problems and the, the, the asks that the customer brings to the project. And so this approach of always looking of how much you can do within the budget, within the resources that you have, it's management. Ultimately, what I really enjoyed on the consultancy piece was to do things with people. And so step by step, I was understanding that in the end of the day, what I was really enjoying the most was that sense of you have a project and even it seems almost impossible, but with that team, with that level of commitment, that level of engagement, we are able to achieve together. And whenever I was um, working in that environment, I noticed that, and this is my nature, I'm usually super organized and I'm usually try to anticipate things. So again, my, my, my basic skill set of looking at, the, at what is the reason, try to anticipate, try to see the strategy was used within the context of a project. And so step by step, I think I was, I was um, moving towards management and to project management. And uh, at some point I really decided that, uh, yes, it's management. I, I want to move completely uh, or to move aside from uh, technology in the sense of deployment, delivering and move to management uh, as a, uh, a daily job. And uh, whenever I had the opportunity, I just took it. It was a bit early, but I just took it. And I think definitely it's where I, I see myself, yes. That, that does resonate a lot with me, actually. Um, I do know that the engineers, when they start, they're always, you know, looking for the root cause of problems. They want to experiment a lot. But um, you said that you saw yourself as, as a leader early on in your career when you were working with other people and you were um, just deploying all these solutions and then you were able to locate your your leadership style so can you talk a little bit about that how do you um know you're a leader did you think that you're a natural leader what kind of skills do people you know really acquire when they say that you know he's, he's a good leader what's your leadership style tell us more about that well definitely I didn't in recognize myself as a leader uh, I would say not in an early stage not today in the sense of leading or uh, making, uh, uh, taking decisions for others. That is not definitely my approach. Yeah. Uh, if you ask me what is my leadership style, I would say I want to be able to see my team achieving a common goal making sure I'm trying to put or allowing the potential of each person to be in the right place. So okay. usually I try to see it. it it's, it's taking a bit of humanity, but I think it helps a lot to see or to visualize what I'm saying is I try to see things as a chess game in the sense of we have a goal and I, for me it's important to understand at each point in time, what is the goal for, for me and for my team. I have a different role than the team, but I'm also a team player. I'm, we just have a different role. It's like in the chess, each piece has a different profile, 
but that you won't gain anything if you want put all the pieces working in the right place with the right direction and that's uh, how i feel it it's like yes we have a team i'm just one more for the team i have a different role and i should be able to help to bring clarity and to help people to be confident in themselves because sometimes people due to their tenure due to their experience don't propose themselves, try to, to be reluctant in proposing and exposing themselves to different goals. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to, to, to be used like a um, safe net because mm -hmm. I'm here yeah. to give the space for people to grow. At the same time, if something won't go so well, I'm here because I'm accountable for, but I will put the team working together like each one can be as, as intent to be understanding, of course, that in a business context, we have some ground rules, but we don't need to have everybody doing exactly the same. We just need to be aligned and with the right direction and with the right timing, meaning that like an orchestra, right? Everybody needs to play with the right timing because otherwise the music will be a nightmare, okay? The yeah. best musician individually won't be the best uh, team player in an orchestra. And uh, I'm not an um, individual player, definitely. I'm, I'm, I, I work in an orchestra all the time. Sometimes it doesn't work so well, we understand why. And this kind of mindset of always looking for what was not so good, what we are doing great, let's keep it. Let's understand how things can improve. And this needs to happen through people. That's the big difference is. I really like that. I, I like that you give yourself the time to understand people and their skills and put them in the right place, uh, be able to delegate. I think this is this is the most important as, thing. Yeah. Yes, as much as possible. That's yes. That's uh, that's how how I like it is to understand that people we can be super transparent to each other in the sense of provide feedback and telling something that eventually won't be a compliment because mm -hmm. one people won't take it in, in a positive way, but it's something that they understood that is, that's the way to grow. It's not something that it's constructive feedback. That is really something meaningful and, and crucial for all of us to grow and to learn and to get into a different uh, opportunity, a different challenge. If people don't give us the right feedback, we never know. Uh, so yeah. we need to understand our perception through the others. That is how things are, right? You know, makes sense. Right, yeah, that's, that's uh, yeah, the, I, I, love, I love this talk. I mean, we could, we could spend like, um, you know, a whole hour just talking about, about management. Uh, but, you know, I, so from what I understood from you, it's more of like putting the pieces together. So you have a, you have mm -hmm. a whole team and everyone has a certain responsibility. Everyone has a certain potential. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, your job as a manager is to really um, put those pieces um, together. But just, just a follow-up question on that. So how do you determine what the potential is of a specific person? Or in other words, how do you know if that person is good in X and you know, he's weak in Y and you know, what you can do to develop Y? So do you have a certain formula that you um, have with your directs you know, to figure out their strengths and weaknesses? How, how does this process work um, work for you? So let's say if you want to bring out the potential out of someone, do you have a certain formula for that? Or No, I don't have any formula. Neither uh, one size on one approach won't fit all. One of the things that is, is the baseline for, for, I would say, bringing the potential of anyone uh, and... Uh, works the same for me is we need to trust, trust each other because trust is the baseline so we can share we can be transparent and we can feel like we are in a trust environment so we whatever we are doing whatever we are testing whatever we are trying to do differently if it doesn't work well we don't we are not blocking us from doing anything because of the, the fear of the impact, right? So we need to trust people. So, and people need to trust us. We need to build that connection. 
otherwise people won't share something that they are uncomfortable they don't like to do something that they feel uh, I would say less recognized so the trust for me is the baseline and uh, and the baseline also to have a team spirit we don't need to be all friends but we need to trust each other we need to understand what are our values the things that no matter what we won't miss it and that is the really the dna the culture of a team that is crucial with that we can do everything almost everything because then it, it's it's a play, it's a game it's a game in the sense of people can play different roles people can have different timings people can have different ambitions and even that be all together with a, a common purpose. And that is, 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 is hard to build because it requires a lot of time, requires a lot of attention to understand the details, to understand what people are saying in between. It takes time to build that level of communication and uh, with some people, it's super easy. With others, it's not so easy because we are all humans. Some people have empathy with us and we have also empathy the other way around. Some, yeah. it's not so, and we need to build and we need to make sure that because we are in a working environment, our bias, because all of us has a kind of initial bias that shouldn't block or, or um, reduce the level and the capabilities of building this trust environment. So sometimes we need to rationalize as well. Uh, sometimes we need to ask for help. Sometimes we need to have our, our people that we can share our thoughts and, and will provide us the, the feedback in a very uh, uh, clear way without any, uh, any miss, uh, miss message. So, but I think that resonates a lot with human. In the end, we are all humans. Doesn't matter if you're talking about work environment, with your family, with your friends, practicing sports, doing some theater, whatever. Uh, of course, we, we share a bit of our different, um, not profiles, but how much we want to share in these different contexts, but we are unique and how much transparent we are with with ourselves we'll feel more comfortable because the level of energy someone needs to it's like if someone is a actor and needs to play a role if the, you don't resonate with that role you need to put a lot of energy to behave like that it's everything re rational if something is supernatural it's easy peasy okay and and i would say that's also applies to work if you're playing a role, if you're being quite authentic, if you're being quite transparent in most of the things, of course, taking care of the communication, taking care of the context of people and everything. But if you're being yourself, the level of energy you need to invest to achieve something, it's much less than others. So you'll be much more efficient. So you will get energy for other things. So again, it gains to the beginning. We need to know each other. We need to know ourselves because the balance that each of us will get is different and change with the time as well. Uh, when I was 20 something, it's not the same that now and I have a couple of more years. So, uh, and we need to try to be wise in the way we invest our energy. Right, right. So it's, it's more, um, yeah, as you said, it's, it's about trust and having a common goal, which, which takes time and that's, um, and that's okay. And, you know, mm -hmm. we're all different. So, right. Um, Okay, so Claudia, if, okay, so you're a director, you've been a director um, in support for about two years, I think, so you're a manager of managers, so if you were to interview me for a management role, mm -hmm. what do you look for in a manager? So in other words, what defines an effective manager? And if you were to interview me, what qualities do you look for in me? First of all, nowadays that I'm manager of managers, the first thing, uh, it's important to understand what is missing in my team. And that applies, I would say, almost the same way as I, when I was manager of engineers. So it's, if I want to have the best team 
and the best team, it's not necessarily to have the best um, role models for the job. It means the best team. So they need to work with each other. They need to, 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 to do everything that I've, I've mentioned before to be a team. So uh, I need to understand what is missing. Why? Because one of the things that is crucial for a team and for each of us to grow at any point in time is we need to have people that think in a different way. We cannot have people or everybody thinks the same way because otherwise when we see a problem, we will have a similar approach. And if we want to be challenged in the way we are seeing things, we need to have people that feel confident and comfortable sharing their thoughts, their perspectives, their, their, their way of seeing things that probably will be completely different from mine, from other peers. And so to have this diverse environment in terms of how people see things, how people look at challenges, how people deal with frustration, how people um, deal with goals and how people look at other people. If we have a bit of different profiles, we'll have a um, we will have within the team much more capabilities to face any challenge at any point in time. Oops. Having said this, when I'm looking at someone, I don't necessarily look only as a manager because there are people that are already managers. There are people that are moving or willing to move to a manager and maybe they have potential. So this is something that I always need to understand what is missing, what is the gap, what I need now. So having said this, the second thing is someone to join my team needs to be part of the team. So usually I, I always ask the help for some, some of my, my team members to start with uh, the first uh, round of interviews. Why this? Mm -hmm. uh, because this will allow us to understand what is the empathy and what is their perception. And so... Uh, who else will join will be a team member and will be a team member for all of us, not only for me. And so this is really important. So to understand, again, what's the other's perception? Imagine that someone that I can do an interview and I say, oh, amazing, just great. And someone from my team says, yes, but when we are talking about this, it shows that it was not so comfortable. So to have different perspectives, even mm. in the way we are looking at someone is really relevant and important because that's the way to be more, I would say insightful, but also fair in the sense of the way we are assessing people. This is very interesting for me, honestly. I love it. Um, the whole idea that you look at the challenges ahead that um, there's a problem you wanna solve. Uh, there's no limited type of skill set. You just need people who are willing to work together. You need people who are willing to mm -hmm. uh, look at it differently, to to crack it. There, it's um, when we when we try to you know read a book about managers. There are so many rules, you know, and people go like, you have to choose somebody with this and inclusion and then diversity, and then uh, he has to be super confident. He has to be. There's like a certain skill set or personality traits that, um, you know, they do make sense, but it's it's very nice to see it from, you know, an angle where you put the problem first and then you try to see how people look at it rather than just examining the person and their uh, experience and whatever they put in their CV. That's awesome. Um, yes. And, and, and uh, whenever we do an interview, even if that person that can have, I would say, a great skill set and a great uh, capabilities for the role, but probably it's not the missing match that I have mm. in my team. That doesn't mean that that person will be, I would say, followed and will have an opportunity later. Because if we are being truthful in the way we are assessing people, someone, if it's a good candidate, maybe it's not a good candidate for this position exactly, mm -hmm. but can be for the next one. And so it's important to do a fair assessment and not only try to look for now. So try to get a, a global picture of what, what is the person, what motivates, 
how they how see things, how it sees herself, himself. So there's a lot of different angles through a conversation that mm. we can try to, I would say, to have the best knowledge about that candidate. And that mm. will be really valuable. That makes a lot of sense. I feel like we can talk about this for a really long time, but I <laughs> want to use some of the time left to talk about your personal life a little bit. So you talked mm -hmm. about painting when you were younger. Do you still do that now that you're a mom? How do you balance being so busy at work and being a superstar <laughs> with um, you know, your family? Well, uh, first thing, I, I'm not a superstar at all in the sense of we I'm think so. <laughs> thank you so much but let me let me share why I'm saying this because I think one of the most important things for me is to understand and to feel I would say to be uh, friendly to myself in the sense of I'm not superwoman I'm not mm -hmm. able to do everything perfect I would love to but I, I, I'm not I'm not, and I realized a long time ago that is not possible. And, and to be a bit more, a, li, a, a bit less strict to myself in terms of how I assess myself, help me to have more calm and to be more peaceful, to be, to be much more uh, relaxed with myself. This is something that, and resonates a lot with what we expect from us mm -hmm. and and sometimes I talk with myself saying you need to stop in the sense of you won't achieve everything perfect it's not possible I don't have enough time and I would say most of us don't have enough time to be at the level of the excellence that we would like in every single uh, key component of our lives yeah. and so uh, that is the first thing uh, nowadays you ask me about painting no, I don't paint. Uh, I don't do paintings in the sense of like I was doing 15 years ago. But whenever I have an opportunity, and that can be at home, can be with my my kids to do something for the school, some mm. project, I just take the opportunity to bring a bit of that and That's to nice. do and and to enjoy. If you're saying, oh, but it's something that it was with the the same level of detail, time investment, uh, quality effort. No, but I'm enjoying other things that balance. So even yesterday, my, uh, we, we are locked down at home. And so I have the kids having school and my youngest, that is 11. He was saying, mama, I need to do some, some, some drawing. Can you help me? What are the colors? And I said, oh, let's try to do this and this. So it's not painting, but I would say, I just try to bring a bit of the things that I enjoy to something that is even more meaningful that is my family my kids to understand that they are that I'm also helping them in their uh, journey and so I would say we balance it's not yeah. the same level of achievement but yeah I, I not changing according to the life stage so you need to set the priorities every couple of years differently yeah. yes yes and and sometimes just uh, see what many times we say oh that was that person has so much luck and i say yes we all of us can have luck if we also pay attention on the opportunities that life brings to us and sometimes oh, yeah. it's not when we planned it's unexpected and we need to be available for that so yes it was not the best thing if i need to decide not to be able to paint and i not able to do all the hobbies that I would love to yes true but yeah. I have other things and maybe later on when my kids were already out of my home that I will have enough time to paint everything that I want so <laughs> yeah it makes sense it, it definitely Let's enjoy does. it yeah yeah you set your priorities uh, one more thing I want to ask um, how do you keep your head straight like every day do you have some kind of um, daily routine daily activity do you meditate do you wake up do you work out do you do something i don't know i don't meditate i don't meditate i'm not able okay. yet to do it i'm not able i will get there <laughs> I, I i usually say i i have to fast paced internally that i'm not able to enjoy the meditation yet i will get there but um i i'm a sports person i love sports mm -hmm. 
and I very I always done sports. Uh, what I've kind? done I've done volleyball at school. Uh, the, I I've done some uh, some other sports uh, well, in a different level of engagement. And uh, when I start, well, even during college, I start doing those uh, gyms and stuff, which is, it's nice. It's not exactly what I really love. Um, and uh, recently, a couple of years ago, well, I run here and then. Nowadays with the lockdown is everything that I can do is, uh, mm. yes, uh, every two days I, I, I run some, some uh, for some time with my music just to release all the energies and to, to keep up with uh, with the, um, I would say it's good for the mind and for the body. It's for everything. Um, and I, well, hopefully when this lockdown will will end yeah. shortly, I will return back to my main sport that is paddle tennis. I love it. And nice. it's, it's um, I have a partner, I have classes, I enjoy it. I don't miss it uh, whenever I have time. Even with my oldest son, he's already playing very well, and we can partnership because it's in pairs, and it's uh, there's strategy, oh. there's practice, there's a goal, there's uh, some competition, which is nice. It's nice. an addition, <laughs> adrenaline, and so yes, definitely I need sports. It's my, I, I love it. Love Good it. to know. That's really interesting. I mean, I could say the same about sports. We could take a whole day to talk about sports because uh, yeah it's also yeah. a big uh, a big passion for us as well but it's nice to hear this uh, uh, this from you um, Claudia you know um, I think we're really trying to be mindful of your time because we really you know appreciate you taking the time to, to talk to us and we're trying to be really mindful about it so um, I'd like to maybe ask um, you know a, a closure question so what is the best piece of advice you have received and would like to pass on to our viewers I know it's a tough one, but it's not tough. It's just because you ask one, because I think that um, it's hard to decide what was the best piece of advice. I, I first thing there, I need to split two things. One is uh, on the work environment, and uh, I have the lucky to to have very good people that were able to tell me the truth in key moments. And so with that, I, I could, again, make my decisions. But I would, uh, I would say the best piece of advice definitely was for my parents, definitely. And that is uh, in the sense of, uh, they always told me to never give up in the sense of work hard for what you really want. Having in mind that you, you have your own values. And this is something really meaningful for me because I think there were key moments where sometimes the way to approach things would be slightly, I would say could struggle with my way of seeing things and um, my values are really something that I don't, it's not a question of forgetting. It's I, I are always here at all the time. It, it's come with me. It's like the package. <laughs> There's no other way. So uh, that advice in terms of um, if I'm not well, don't see the, look for the opportunities to, to, to keep growing, to keep uh, going ahead. And, and I have a very nice, uh, situation because well my mother is like a conservative one so she's super hard woman but always with the feet on the floor so yes be wise uh, don't take too much risk take care don't go and my father is the other way around so yeah. he's always saying yes go for it trust yourself no worries if something happens we are here and even now with this age it's the same and, and I think this is like, it's my balance. So whenever I think, uh, I say, okay, I try to anticipate things. I try to assess the risk. I try to see what are the negative impacts. But at some point, if I'm able to balance, 
go for it. Let's try. It. Let's mm -hmm. give a bet on me. And uh, that is the way I think that this was the best advice because it was something that has helped me to have a, a ton of experience through my life that also helped me to be who I am today. It's not just one, it's everything together with the, with the unsuccess as well during mm -hmm. this lifetime. So this is really relevant. Not everything was perfect. No, there was many things that happened personally and working that were not very nice, indeed, very hard ones. Mm -hmm. But again, the question is, okay, it's not well. How can we make it better? Sometimes we need to go back a bit to get the level of strength and energy to have to be able to carry on. But, but never give up in the sense of we are able to do it. Let's, let's build our energy, our strengths, the people, our allies, the people that can help us to give that level of energy that we need to be able to make our life meaningful and, and enjoyable in the sense of we, we must enjoy. We must yes. enjoy. All this effort needs to make sense. It's not just for the tick mark. It's not for a, for a title. It's not for a level. No, those are small things, nothing. In the end of the day, we need to feel well with ourselves. Oh, that is the way beautiful. to carry on. And so definitely uh, I can bring a lot of managers or many managers that were impactful and I have a couple of them. Probably some of them in those moments were not the ones that I would love the most because they were harsh for me. But uh, looking back, they had a point and, and mm. they were doing something that probably no one else would do. So I, I value and, I, and I, I think that everybody that take time or take their time to provide us something that can be good for us, even if it's something that sometimes is not what we would like to listen, but it's something really valuable. Mm -hmm. We should we should pay attention and That's have beautiful. gratitude and have gratitude. So really grateful for the opportunities, for for the the family, for the friends, for the health, and for everything that uh, have around me. That not everybody has the same setup, mm -hmm. and and make the best of it. So. That's great advice, core values, people around you, your parents, I can tell you grew up in that kind of a balance of a household where your mom is super like, and yeah. you have you have some of both. And that's, that's excellent. I think that's uh, what makes you very special. Um, we would love to continue this conversation. It was a pleasure having you really. Um, yeah, if you have Anything else you would like to say in the end, let us know before we can close this episode. I would say that uh, people made, people should build their own story. Mm -hmm. And each of us has a story. And um, mm -hmm. it, we are the owners, not the others. It's really important to have uh, good supporters, good influencers, good people around us, a, a bit of luck, of course, it's also mm. needed, but we are the ones. So let's not, uh, let's not ignore our role in our own life. And I think that's something meaningful. And that's something that I tell to my kids all the time is take the ownership of your own things. Don't get excuses and assume when we do things that were not well, but let's take it with some kind of proud in the sense of, yes, we are building things. And sometimes we need to have some deviation, some workaround, some, uh, some other ways, but that's life. And, and be, be yourself. That's really important, I think. That makes a lot that's of amazing. sense. That's amazing, that's amazing. Claudia, you know, thank you so much for being here. It was really such such a pleasure having you. We've learned a lot ourselves, so I'm sure our viewers are going to be ecstatic about this. So thank you so much for making the time to talk to us. And thank, thank you a you. lot for the opportunity. It was a pleasure and I love the conversation. <laughs>